Hey there folks, back with another knife review today, this time the Spyderco Sage 2. Now this is a video supplement to my written photo review that can be found on throughmylens.org. The full written photo review, uh, there's a link to it in the description box. And my recommendation is if uh, you haven't already read that, go ahead and read it. Uh, this is just a supplement to that written review. Most of the important data is going to be in the written photo review. This video is just a supplement to, to get some video footage of the knife. Kind of give you some, some of my thoughts on why I purchased this knife. Uh, a couple of factors. One, uh, a big one being uh, another YouTuber, EdgeWeapon88. Uh, I'll throw up a link to his review that he did recently of the Spyderco Sage 2. Fantastic review as always. Uh, Edge Weapons uh, 88 has been reviewing knives for a long time. He knows a heck of a lot more about uh, sharps than I do, uh, but uh, uh, he's he certainly uh, played a big factor. I had some interest in this knife before seeing his his video because this this segment of uh, titanium handled frame locks uh, uh, made uh, made famous and kind of innovated by. The famous Chris Reeve and the Spenza knife. It's it's an interesting area for me. Uh, this is another uh, frame lock that I own. This is the uh, the, the Bradley Alias Two uh, with the uh, anodized blue titanium handles. Uh, I've owned a Chris Reeve Spenza before briefly, uh, so I've got some experience in this segment, and I do like uh, titanium handled frame locks like this Sage 2. Um, a lot to like about this knife. Uh, probably the biggest attractor for me for this knife is uh, this blade. I noticed in Edge Weapon 88's review how similar this blade is to the Manix 2 that I just got. And uh, it's uh, the shape is almost identical and it's actually not that much smaller. Uh, the blade is three inches on 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 this knife, but uh, it's the the Manix two is not that much bigger. If you compare uh, the Alias two, which is pretty identical uh, to the uh, the Chris Reeve model, you can see that lengthwise it's a little bigger, uh, but uh, it's also got a lot more more uh, meat, more thickness there. Than this knife, and uh, when I when I carry this knife, and I've carried this a lot, there's actually some uh, some scratches on the handle from where I've carried it, as is pretty common with a titanium handled uh, frame lock knife. It's going to scratch up. Not much you can do about that. Uh, but when I carry this knife, it's strictly a utility tool. Open boxes, uh, you know, cut string. Uh, really wouldn't consider, unless I had no other option, in using this knife in a tactical or self-defense kind of mode. This knife, however, you know, you, you can get such a nice grip with that curved handle, uh, and the blade, you know, is just a little bit bigger, a little bit beefier. Uh, I, I would, I would much rather have this knife if I had to defend myself than I would this or a small Sebenza, this Alias 2 or a small Sebenza. So that's that's one of the things that was kind of a pleasant surprise. I thought it was going to be a little smaller and was was pleasantly surprised by how large it is. Uh, for those of you that don't know, and I explained this in the written photo review, the whole Sage line by Spyderco is meant to be uh, tribute knives to various knife makers. This one, obviously, a tribute to Chris Reeve and the integral frame lock knife that he innovated and popularized. Uh, as you can probably see on the, the back of the blade here, this knife is made in Taiwan. Uh, you know, uh, if, again, if the, the blade on the Manix 2 is uh, American made. I've compared them side by side, and I can't find any quality differences. Um, I, per I know not being a U.S.-made product is going to bother a lot of people. I try to buy USA when I can, when it makes sense, but it doesn't bother me that this knife is made in Taiwan in the least. Um, 
very light, very easy to carry. Love the uh, the wire pocket clip. I've got a Spyderco Dragonfly that has this the same style pocket clip. It works very well. Uh, it is removable. That's uh, that that's a nice feature. Um, I never thought this uh, Benchmade style pocket clip went real well with this particular knife on a Sebenza. The, the pocket clip is more integrated and uh, looks a little nicer but functionally this is a great pocket clip and uh, it is reversible you can reverse it to the side uh, but uh, you are you are kind of stuck in the tip up carry mode uh, you can't go tip down with this which which is fine with me uh, it deploys very quick very fast this alias 2 is one of the smoothest deploying knives that I've ever had. Uh, certainly a lot smoother than the Sebenza that I had, uh, the small Sebenza. Uh, this Spyderco is kind of right in the middle of the two in terms of how easily it deploys. Um, and I could probably make that a little looser, a little smoother with some adjustments to the, uh, to the pivot screw there. Haven't tried that, but I might just to see if I can smooth it up a little bit. Uh, one of the things that's making me kind of return to Spyderco after having bought several Benchmades and uh, a couple of SOGs is uh, the fact that Spyderco's come so wickedly sharp out of the box. That's they're just I, I think in terms of uh, production knives, they're about the sharpest knives that you can that you can buy out of the box. This particular knife wasn't as sharp as I've seen many Spydercos come, uh, so that was a little bit of a letdown. Don't know if it was because it was from Taiwan, or perhaps uh, just uh, you know uh, uh, didn't come from the factory as sharp as, as maybe some of the other Sage Twos have. No big deal. Uh, Took me about 10 minutes on uh, my Spyderco Sharp Maker sharpening it, and uh, I got this hair popping sharp. As a matter of fact, I used a uh, the other day I brought it to work with me, and I was uh, just rubbing the, bra the blade down with a clean cloth, and and uh, actually just caught the edge of the cleaning cloth and, and cut right through it. It was uh, just so sharp. It, it, I, I just love a Spyderco because of how sharp they are. Um, let me go ahead and get some close-up footage uh, with my macro lens. Okay, got my macro lens on here to get some close-up shots uh, of that uh, S30V uh, blade here. Look at that brushed, brushed finish. Uh, same finish that's applied again to that Manix 2 blade, same leaf shape. And that is a gorgeous blade. It really is. Let's just see the back of the blade. Again, the Made in Taiwan markings there. Um, but just a super high quality knife there. You can see the jimping that's uh, on both both sides of the blade. Just again, just like the Manix 2. It allows you to choke up down there to do precision work, which I really like. Try to get, so you can see the, between the frames, the titanium scales here, there's uh, you know, no, nothing in there to, to make it heavier. Very simple design. Uh, three uh, standoffs between the uh, blade handles and a pocket clip. Very simple design, very strong design. Um, love those titanium handles. For the longest time I didn't think I would like those basic gray titanium handles because in pictures they just kind of look blah, but they're really growing on me. Um, there's that nice pocket clip. And there's the uh, release for the integral frame lock there. So there's just some, some close-up shots of the knife. Okay, so there's some video footage of the Spyderco Sage 2. Uh, I'm glad I was able to pick one up uh, for a pretty bargain rate. Um, it's uh, it's not a sprint run like uh, the Manix 2 that I picked up. It's what I'll call a regular production, but you know at any time Spyderco could stop production of it. So I would say if you have an interest, you know pick one up. I hope they don't. A knife this great should you know remain in their catalog forever and ever. 
but that doesn't seem to be how spider code does things. Uh, they're constantly changing things up and discontinuing knives, so you might want to think about getting this if you have an interest in it. Uh, I really like it. Uh, very happy with the purchase. No complaints, really. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I've liked this so much, particularly the size of it, and was really surprised by that, that uh, I've gone ahead and ordered a uh, Sage 3, the blue bolt, uh, uh, bolt locking mechanism that uh, uh, looks, it's going to look a lot like the uh, famous Manix 2 Blue G10 Sprint Run model that I missed out on and have been uh, wanting to pick up but, and been unwilling to pay speculator prices for. Uh, I'm going to get a, a Sage 3 that's got an S30V, S30V blade steel, uh, a blade that's almost as long as a Manix 2, that gorgeous Blue G10 uh, at a you know very reasonable price. Um, so look for that to be the next knife review that I do. Hopefully I'll get that uh, shipped to me in the next day or so. Uh, but in the meantime, I am definitely enjoying this knife and uh, definitely recommend you pick it up. And I'll also uh, give you a link uh, again to uh, Edge Weapon 88's uh, much more detailed video review. Uh, but also keep in mind the link to my photo review with a lot more detail and information in it uh, can be found in the description box here, box of this video. Uh, until the next video, take care, God bless.